hey Glendon, when are you gonna throw in the towel on this car rental business? I've been seeing that sentiment in the comments over and over and again. The, the car business is taking too much money. The car business is a disaster. And here's the thing. That's business, baby. That's business. What I am going through is a normal part of business. This is why I say that a lot of the YouTubers who make car rental business videos are leaving a lot of stuff out. They're leaving a lot of stuff out because you'll watch their videos and you'll be like, hey, you know, that looks like a good business. Or I have seen a number of them mention the word passive income. And I'm here to tell you, there is nothing passive about this business at scale. It can be kind of sort of passive if you have one, maybe two, maybe three cars. But I currently have 20 cars. And, you know, right now, the majority of them are rented. I have two in the shop. Yeah, uh, at the moment, I have two in the shop one at the office so I have 17 cars rented at the moment and there is what I'm going through is the call I like to call it the gauntlet that's when you first start your business and everything that can go wrong um, you, you have these issues and you will think because it's not going smoothly or easily that you're on the wrong path that's not necessarily uh, the case. Um, one of the things is, I've never done this business before, so I've got a learning curve. Let me give you an example. Let's talk about the GPS trackers and stuff. Everyone's like, you know, you need to have these GPS trackers. I just recently found someone who can actually install them pretty quickly. Took me a minute to get to that. But in the absence of the GPS trackers, I've learned how to manage my fleet. Once a person is one day late, I'm on them. And I would literally hit them up with 10 messages, which is kind of annoying because you have my car, you know you're supposed to be paying me. But people act like children at times. And once you put yourself in the position of a child, you'll be treated as a child. So I will treat them like a child. I will hit them up 10 times. And uh, I had this one girl, she's like, I know I'm late, do you have to contract me 10 times? And I was like, until you pay, this is what's gonna be. I'm gonna be annoying as hell, or you can bring the car back, what you gonna do? And um, she chose to bring the car back, which was cool. Because essentially, what I'm learning is there are a lot of decent, people on hire car they will rent your car they will take care of it they'll even fix things i had one guy he replaced the tire had one guy he replaced the windshield he was like you know i was out and he said a big ass rock flew up and like damn near busted out the windshield he went ahead and fixed that just let you know just let me know still we're in the car he fixed that so that there are some good people out there that's a that would be the majority of the people on hire car um, now there's another segment of people who will play you who will get late because one of the things I've learned is once a person rents a car from you if they're immediately late get the car back just go ahead and like well, this ain't gonna work we need to break up just go ahead and get the car back because what you will have if they're like immediately, like they rent the car for two or three days and they immediately start being late, this will be a pattern. This will be a pattern. And essentially, um, I dehorsed someone and I was like, look, you know, this is my policy. Once you're late, you just had the car two days, you're already late. This will be going to ongoing problems. So I want the car back. And if you don't bring the car back, I'm calling the police. You can no longer rent from me. And since I started doing that um, 
a lot of stuff stopped because one of the things that one of the things that I have learned is renter management so I'm, I'm doing a better job at managing these people I'm doing a better job of heading off disaster so essentially I have one guy I thought I was going to call the police on him he brought the car back so essentially I've got a learning curve because I've never done this business and many of you because of a lot of these youtubers who are leaving stuff out or they're sugarcoating it or soft coating it that you're like really super like car bnb is the only one who was doing youtube videos that talked about the car business from a realistic standpoint and he never got the views i remember he did this video when my car got stolen i had three wrecks in one week uh, I've never seen this from Samara's experience. I've never seen this from uh, any other Turo person. And essentially, car Airbnb, car BNB's experience mirrored mine. He was the only YouTuber to actually tell the truth about the car rental business. He was the only one. Because a lot of them, they're going through it. They gotta be. They gotta be. I've only been doing this two months and only have 20 cars. So anyone that has been doing this in any length of time, they've gone through it and they're just not talking about it because let's look at car b, &B. He told the truth. He told the truth and he did not get the views. He didn't get the views. You know, and I think, you know, no homo, he's a good looking brother, charismatic. He should have been getting the views. Here's the thing. People don't want people don't like bad news. People like, you know, because car air car B, &B was actually giving you a preview of what's going to happen if you're in this business. He was giving you a preview of this is how the car rental business, this is what goes down, this is what happens. So one of the things that people don't understand or don't want to appreciate is the truth. And many of you, I've been doing this two months. Two months! Erica did trucking for three years before she threw in the towel. Come on, man. Um, You know, two months is not a long time. It's not a long time. Now, once again, uh, I've made some mistakes. And th this 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 is kind of changing up a little bit because um, right now all of my SUVs are rented out. All of the Range Rovers I have two. I have four Range Rovers. They're all rented. Um, one is on one is on a long term rental, and it's kind of making me reconsider. Um, what I'm gonna do because if it's rented, because this is the month where I'm gonna see what my real numbers are. Because if I can, you know, because essentially you buy a car and you put it on the platform, it doesn't usually, you know, well, it just depends on what kind of car it is. Uh, if it goes out immediately, that's good. Because typically, once a car rents for the first time, it rents the second time much, much faster. But this month, I want to see what my average rental rate will be. Because with this month, um, you know, it is the 3rd of July. The 4th of July is tomorrow. And um, if I can achieve a thousand bucks a day, let me tell you what's going to happen. Because once again, I don't know. I don't know. But if I can achieve a thousand bucks a day, that's going to be thirty-one thousand dollars this month, right? And I currently have a ten thousand dollar credit card bill, I believe. So I predict 
what's going to happen is cars are going to stop breaking down. There's going to be a period where nothing's going to break. There's not going to be an incident. I'm not going to have any yard bird renters and the money's just going to stack. So I've already paid off the disruptive asset credit card. So now this is my goal is to pay off this card. Now, if this month goes as I hope, that would give me money to buy two more cars and pay off that credit card. And then the month of August will give me enough money to buy three cars. And essentially, you know, it's a holiday weekend. I'm actually going to look at another car. I'm not going to buy it until next week because I can't, because it's holiday weekend. I already did that video. You, you can't get nothing done. I can't get the GPS kill switch installed. I, I'm like uh, one guy who's supposed to be fixing a car. He was, you know, it's a holiday weekend. I'm not even going to call him until Tuesday because it's like, I'm like, you know, he's, he's married. He's got kids. He's probably chilling this weekend with his family. So I will call him next week. And, you know, so potentially next week we will be getting three cars. Uh, replacing the Porsche and uh, I got enough bunny for two cars there and then I will like if he fixes this car and sells it to me that would be three cars so we will see how that goes because once again I am still collecting data I'm still learning because all right um, let's say I keep the Range Rovers I keep them right and they, they continue to perform because essentially at 70 bucks a day, um, I can pay that off in a year. Nothing that I have in the fleet, because I, I, I purposely stayed away from cars that were like $30,000. Um, the BMW, I cannot pay that off in a year. The BMW X5, and part of the reason I'm thinking about keeping it is it's a good clean car and I know I can rent it I can rent it on Toro I can rent it on hire car pretty easily and um, once again I have a feeling I'll be getting that back real soon because essentially um, the renters having a problem and uh, you know she's gotten behind she's like three days behind and like this is something else I learned like when I want to get my car back I know I got to bring the police involved because when I was like hey you know you're behind you should bring it back so the other day I sent off um, three demand letters and this is why you know I'm not buying this car until I can get the GPS tracker into it because what I'm gonna do as I buy new cars I will have the GPS and kill switch installed so in the future when they stop paying just turn the car off and go get it and I won't have this frustration of having to deal with people because one of the things I've learned is people don't think they can get in trouble for keeping your car. They feel that it's a civil matter, as in the case of player, player, Mr. Range Rover. He was like, it's not stolen. I was like, oh, really? And when the cop explained to him that, hey, yes, it will be treated as a stolen car. You get caught driving it. You will be arrested. Or whoever, the single mama, would be arrested. So he brought, he quick, fast, and hurry, he brought it back then. But see, uh, one of the things I'm learning is how to buy cars. Because like I said, if the Range Rover, which is on a long-term rental, if they continue to perform, I'm not going to disturb that groove because essentially uh, I'm getting ready to switch it out. Like this is another thing. Like with Hire Car and Turo, you have what's called a protection plan right and this is your insurance plan and I'm slowly moving everything to the 85% plan for hire car which is a little risky because at the 85% hire 85% plan your deductible is $3,000 so at the 70% plan your deductible is $500 Let's go ahead and talk about this. I brought a renter back. The mirror has a hole in it. There's a dent in it. 
and there's a little damage on the front bumper. Nothing to keep the car from being rented. It's just, in the next person that is like, I already know this, 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 and I'm not gonna fix it because it would cost me what I made in terms of renting it to fix it. So I'm not gonna fix it. And I'm not, you know, emotionally attached to these cars because if um, this had happened to my Porsche, I would be livid. I would be losing my mind if this had happened to the Porsche. Uh, so essentially, I'm learning that I'm gonna have to deal with damage. I'm gonna, you know, renters are gonna do stuff. And a girl, she called me, actually, she was in the wreck. She just got some scrapes. It's on one of the Camrys. I honestly don't care. I was like, can you still drive the car? Is anything hanging off? She said, no, it's just a few scratches. Not a problem. Because once again, that's why I will never, you know, and you got people here on YouTube that are renting out their, their daily driver. And I think those folks are crazy because sooner or later, it is going to bite them in the butt. Someone's going to be renting their car and they're going to bring it back and the bumper is going to be hanging off or some or it's going to be scratched and they're going to be pissed. So I would not advise you to rent out your car to make your car payment. I, I think that is just, mm, like I said, the things that have happened to me, the things that I've gone through lets me know that putting like, all right, this car, this Porsche, this Porsche is tuned, which means that it's faster than it normally is, and it's already fast. So I let's say I rent this to someone young, and they get in here, and they just don't know how to drive this thing, and I get this call, uh, four your tires are flat, and the bumper's hanging off, because I ran into something, I ran, I, I, I would be willing to kick their ass. I'm like, how dare you do that to my, like, once again, never ever put your car that you care about or you wanna drive on a daily basis on any rental platform. I'm just, that that's just my word of advice to you. I bought all these cars to rent out their employees. Their job is to go get money and bring me dollars back. That is their job. That is their job, you know. I am not um, holding on to this. I'm not, um, like I said, you know. And even when the Acura came back with the damage, I was like, you know, I was a little upset, but I wasn't devastated or, you know, fuming or calling up the renter and cussing them out. I wasn't doing all that. Because essentially, you know, this is the car rental business. I am showing you the real car rental business. And in time, because you know, let's talk about some mistakes that I bought. Um, hold on. Oh, let's see. I think I am here. struggle with this because um, like I said the Range Rovers are rented out and um, I am like you know kind of ambivalent about that because they're rented out and they're making money and the only thing the only two vehicles that I bought well the Porsche is gone so I'm going ahead and I'm um, going to replace that the, that Porsche. But the Porsche and the BMW are the only two vehicles that I bought that I cannot earn enough rental money within a year to pay them off. So um, 
the BMW, and also one of the things that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to rent the cars for two years. That is something that's relatively new. I am still going to get my dealer's license, but I'm going to rent the cars for two years to fully get the money out of these vehicles because uh, I got I got some vehicles that will pay for themselves in six or seven months, right? But I've got some that are a little bit more expensive that are going to take longer to pay. So I'm gonna rent them for two years and then I'm gonna sell them. So I'm gonna still get my dealer's license. I'm still working on that because there's one more thing that they gotta do that they haven't gotten around to do. Cause I gotta have a name on the door, I gotta have a file cabinet and I have to be in the directory to apply, even apply for my dealer's license. I already know where I can get my fingerprints done. So with that two year plan, everything you know the more expensive vehicles will you know year two every month will be nothing but profit and you know i will go on this two-year plan and then um i will then start selling them because the thing is i got to sell them and this is why i'm gonna need my dealer's license because at some point i'm gonna be selling you know 10 20, 30, 40 cars in a month, you know, because like at the end of two years, I got 20 cars that I'm going to be selling. So, yeah, I mean, that's going to be very, very interesting. So now I've adjusted my timeline because, um, you know, when I get my dealer's license, I will buy one car and sell it and see how much money and just take that money and keep flipping it and flipping it like that. I'll, I'll do that, but I am firmly in the rental car business because it is more profitable to rent the car than it is to sell it. Because I have a lot of people, um, the guy who's got the BMW, he wants to buy it so bad. And I'm like, look, bro, I'm not in the position to sell you that car. And essentially, I'm not selling that car until it makes me what I put into it back. I'm not selling any of these cars. Um, you know, I don't care how bad they want them because I know that some people do that. But from my standpoint, um, it 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 doesn't work for me at the moment. Once I get my dealer's license and once I get set up and once I get the credit education and all this stuff going, yeah, I'll be selling cars. I'll do a buy here, pay here lot. But right now, it doesn't make sense for me to sell because what's going to happen is I'm going to be in a position where I'll have people, I'll be the bank and I don't want to be the bank. I'm not interested in being the bank because essentially, you know, I can make money, but then, you know, it, it just doesn't work out for me to be the bank at the moment. It's just not in my best interest at the moment. So I'm not going to be the bank. I'm not doing it. And the car is gone. One of the things I've learned is if it's like a really good deal, it's not gonna last long. So there was someone in there financing the car as I drove up and, um, you know, it kind of bites, but here's the problem. I can't do anything until after this holiday is over. So the car would have been sitting because I want to get that GPS kill switch and the people that I got to do that once it's holiday weekend. It's a holiday weekend. So we can't move forward with anything until um, we get all that fixed. We, we just can't move forward. And this is one of my frustrations. 
as I put in the vehicle in the other video that like you know holiday weekend everybody's off everything's closed so I got two cars I'm not getting back to next week I got um, projects I got plans and I just gotta wait until this holiday weekend is over to start rolling on my plans and doing the things I need to do because essentially what is going to happen is I got to be patient like I said I've been doing this two months right and a lot of people are like when are you, you going to quit when are you going to pull the plug and I, I have no intentions of pulling the plug anytime soon I am still in startup mode I'm still building and once again this is what you're going to go through when you start a real business dealing with the public if this was an internet business it would be totally different totally different uh, it would be so different it would be a hundred percent different because with an internet business like i would not have to wait until people open up and put these gps kill switches in which uh, that's the new process because um, once I get the kill switches in, when I do have someone who wants to take advantage, I can just cut the car off and go pick it up. So that's gonna be part of the new intake process. And also, one of the things that's funny is I'm kinda glad I didn't put GPS kill switches in all the vehicles because there's a lot of vehicles that I am getting rid of. There's a, there's a bunch of vehicles that are going bye-bye. I'm not gonna keep them. I'm gonna trade out of them. I'm going to, um, go ahead, man. I am going to get rid of them and it would have been a big issue to get rid of these cars after I've already installed a GPS kill switch in. That would be a problem. That would have been a big, big problem. That would have been um, a pain in the booty because um, I would have paid money. I would have had the GPS kill switch, which is like $200 per kill switch, then two to 300 bucks to put them in. And that would have been an added expense um, on top of purchasing the car. So one of the things that's going to happen with the new intake process is I'm going to do a better job at buying cars. I am not going to be in this situation where I'm going to have cars that um, I'm getting rid of. Because essentially, and also probably what's gonna happen is, because um, I'm kind of wishing that I came and got that car. Because I knew it wasn't gonna, I knew it wasn't gonna last. And like with the holiday weekend, I was taking a gamble, but yeah, you know, essentially this is the new intake process. We're going to inspect the car much better. And when I mean inspect the car, like little stuff you wouldn't think of. I got a collision shop. I'm going to take the car by and like, was this car wrecked? Regardless of what the car fact says. Do that. And also things you don't think of, like do the doors close properly? Because if the car was wrecked, I am more than likely not going to buy it because typically wrecked cars have things like where the doors don't close properly. I had a wrecked car where the trunk was just flying up. Um, so I'm probably going to stay away from wrecked cars and just have a much tighter intake process and do a better job of buying cars because uh, it's going to take me a little bit more time to buy the cars and essentially, you know, uh, there's some cars I wanted that they flew up because essentially my process isn't where I need it to be. 
and part of this is because it's a holiday weekend you know you you just can't get things done um, people are off and you know my team I'm assembling my team and I know my team is off so next week I'll probably get those three cars I'll find some other cars uh, this was a very clean specimen and he was the, the guy who bought it was definitely my target audience so um, we will see but yeah so we got to get the process down we got to get the intake process down we got to get the GPS kill switches and essentially this is why I did not buy a car and th this is one of the frustrating things because when you have a team in like a holiday weekend you can't get stuff done you just can't get stuff done until everyone gets over the holiday and they come back to work so that's where I'm at right now we will see but I've been doing this two months man I've been doing this two months it is kind of wild but it's only been two months y'all two months so that's all I got for you guys I will see you in the next one